When this incident happened, I was 16 years old and had just got my license maybe a month prior to this event. I needed to go to the bank to withdraw some money in order to pay my responsibilities for the month. No big deal, whatever. My first car was a stick shift, so naturally I was still trying to learn the ropes of it and was still anxious about small spaces. The parking lot for the bank in my town is unbelievably small and cramped, but there is a considerably large lot up on the hill behind it with a few small shops. I decided to park there to satisfy my fear of doing something stupid in the tiny bank parking lot. As I walked towards the main entrance, I noticed a man and woman standing near their car that were staring at me, which made me pretty uncomfortable. They looked pretty bad off, appearing fairly dirty and standing next to a typical old and crappy town car of some sort. I tried to shrug it off and tell myself, don't worry, they'll be gone when you come back out. I went inside, finished my business, and walked back outside, hoping to not see the couple again. When I stepped back outside the couple was still there, but only now they were sitting in their car instead of watching from outside of it. I was still putting the money inside of my wallet when I was walking through the doors, which in retrospect was pretty dumb since they could see that I now had cash on me. Walking back to my car, checking over my shoulder every now and then to make sure they aren't following, sure enough they head for the lot that I'm in. Nervous as hell, I fast walk to my car trying to make it where they don't beat me to it. Right as I get to the car door, they pull up right next to my car, slamming on the brakes in the parking spot. I knew this was completely not an ordinary trip to one of the stores for them because I was a decent distance from any of the actual stores and there weren't any other cars around where we were now both parked. I got in my car as fast as I could, just as they were getting out of theirs, seemingly approaching me. The man had a very sick look on his face and the woman had a completely blank look in her eyes. I peeled out as fast as I possibly could and booked it all the way home, thankful that they didn't follow me out of the parking lot. I have no idea what these two people wanted from me, but I can sure as hell tell you it wouldn't have been a friendly interaction. Creepy bank people, let's never meet. Yesterday morning I went to the local bank to deposit a check my grandma had sent me. As I was standing by the teller, waiting for her to deposit the check into my account, I heard someone come through the double doors. This might sound dorky, but ever since I was a kid I've wanted to be an undercover secret agent for the FBI. And while that's not the field I ended up in, I like to play games in my mind. One of these games is to always be aware of who is in the room. So when I heard the double doors open, I looked over my shoulder to see a tall African-American man with dreads. The dreads caught my attention because they looked to be poorly taken care of and made his hair really poof out. I turned back to the teller and the man came up beside me and started throwing wadded up plastic shopping bags at the tellers. My teller made eye contact with me and awkwardly chuckled as if she thought it was some poorly done joke. But then the man started shouting at them to put money in the bags. In one leap, he jumped onto the counter, which in hindsight was impressive because it's nearly five feet high and over to where the tellers were standing. But as he jumped up, he hit his head on the ceiling, knocking his wig and glasses off. I just stood there staring, half in shock and half because I wanted to be able to identify him to the police. He rummaged around behind the counter, stuffing money in his grocery bags before coming to stand behind the teller that had been handling my transaction. Only then did he realize I was standing there staring at him. I hadn't seen it before, but in his right hand he held a small gun and pointed it at my face, telling me to get down on the floor. I don't know what the crap I was thinking, but I was mad. You know when you were a teenager and if you were really mad, you'd slam your bedroom door? But if you were mad and wanted to be passive aggressive, you'd close it hard enough so that your parents knew you're mad but not too hard so you can say you didn't mean to? I don't know why, because for being level-headed so far, I wasn't thinking at this moment, but I passive-aggressively took my purse from the ledge, dropped it on the floor, and plopped down next to it. Thankfully, he was too busy stealing everyone's money to notice my foolishness. As I was sitting there waiting for him to leave, I realized he couldn't see me and started debating whether or not to call the cops. But I remembered seeing one of the tellers put her hand under the ledge and figured she had pushed the emergency button. I also didn't know what the man would do next and figured it'd be better if he didn't see a phone in my hand. 
When he was done, he jumped back over the counter and ran out the front door and made his getaway on a bicycle. Side note, he wasn't even a good robber. I mean, his disguise fell off and he escaped on a bicycle. What is wrong with, I mean, how can a person be that? Has he never watched a crime show? Just, just wow. Lamest. Heist. Ever. The cops were there in moments. I ended up staying over an hour, writing what I saw and verbally explaining to the cops what I saw. I don't want to jeopardize the investigation because as far as I know he hasn't been caught yet, but before the man escaped something fell from his pocket and I'm hoping it can be used in finding him. I want it to be noted that when stuff like this happens, people rarely think about the tellers. Those women were terrified, but incredibly brave and I think that should be recognized. So not your typical creeper story, but he was definitely a creep I hope never to see again. Some background for this story. This bank employee, we'll call him Dan, is someone I had known was creepy because of how he was inappropriate while helping my friend with her account transactions. I went in for a consultation with her because it was on the way of us going to the beach one day, and instead of acting professionally like most employees, Dan decided to flirt with us and try to convince us to purchase a Victoria's Secret credit card to maintain good credit and how he would love to be there for that. Okay dude, whatever you say. We sort of just laughed it off and were accord. However, as weeks went by, he continually tracked my friend's purchases and used her account information to get her phone number and text her that she should come in and invite her out, which is so not okay. Dan continued this until she eventually canceled her account with that bank and opened another one at Bank of America. He was never reported, she didn't want anything to do with it, and she blocked his number. Fast forward to last year when I had to go in and meet with a bank employee. I walked through the door and behold, it's creepy Dan great. I was alone and even though there were plenty of bank employees around we were in his cubicle and since I was traveling to Europe and he was Spanish or something, he started asking me how to say inappropriate words in Spanish like curse words and all that extremely creepy stuff. He asked for my email address and I said I didn't have one. He asked for my phone number and I said, since I was studying abroad, I had discontinued service. Quick lie, thank God. He then asked me if I had plans that night and if I had ever opened a VS credit card because he'd really like to see my friend and I model something for him together. EW, this guy had a kid, mentioned it even. He was mid-30s and a bank manager. Why me? I quickly hurried out and decided to report him but eventually slipped my mind since I was leaving the country in three days. I actually went into the bank last week to find a lot of new staff and remodeling had been done and talked to one of the bank teller associates and asked if they had changed staff due to any reason. I mentioned that there were a couple of creepy dudes, Dan had a creepy friend named Steve that also worked at the bank and was equally disgusting, that were texting my friend and acting unprofessional and inappropriate. The bank teller said that he had them fired due to a complaint that a young girl was being harassed, texted, and basically bank stalked by Dan. Thank God Dan's fired. I can only imagine how many girls he might have harassed or done even more to. Do your job, don't make your customers feel uncomfortable or unsafe around you, and for the love of God, stop being creepy. This happened several years ago when I was 19. I worked nights and was on my way home at about 7 in the morning, maybe a little earlier. I had gotten paid and decided to go ahead and deposit my paycheck. There were two banks I went to regularly, one that had a drive-up ATM that was in a creepy neighborhood or one that had a walk-up ATM that was at a busy intersection that was relatively well lit. I chose what I thought was the safest route and went with the well-lit walk-up ATM. There were two other people there, and it was winter, so I stayed in my car until they were finished. I remembered the last person to use the ATM before me was a large guy in a red pickup. I got out of the car, did what I needed at the ATM, and was walking back to my car. Just when I went to unlock the door, a man walked out from behind the bank and started coming toward me. He was wearing a black ski mask and a black and red coat. He seemed to be very tall, but everyone is tall to me since I'm only 5 feet 2 inches. 
I froze when I realized he was pointing a gun straight at my chest. I choke out that I didn't have any money. He told me he didn't want money and that's when I started shaking. Looking back I should have started running to the gas station across the street but when you see that gun barrel pointed straight at you it's hard to think rationally. He made me open the car door and he pushed me over to the passenger seat. He took the keys from my hand and turned the car on and started to pull out of the parking lot. I started screaming and crying asking why and what did he want. He kept repeating he was just cold, he just wanted to get out of the cold. He started freaking out once we got on the road, he started asking me questions like how old I was and why I didn't have money. I answered his question while I banged on windows, screamed, and cried. Once he started driving off with me I knew I was going to be seriously hurt or killed by this nutcase and I wanted to make someone notice me, even if someone couldn't help me before anything happened maybe they would remember the screaming girl in the car and contact the police. I kept thinking I was going to be one of those poor girls whose picture is flashed during the evening news and I needed someone to remember seeing me that morning. Once he asked me how old I was, that's when he really freaked out and pulled into a doctor's office. He apologized and patted me on the head and got out of the car. He asked me not to get him in trouble and then walked off. I then called the police, but of course they never found him. Looking back I can't shake the idea he was waiting for someone like me, a small woman. If he had just wanted a ride, why pull out a gun? Why go to a girl? He would have been more likely to get a ride from a guy if that's really all he wanted. The cop said he was probably some crack head that wasn't in his right mind, as if that was supposed to calm me down. I can't help thinking he had a plan and wanted a girl, but had panicked before he could do what he wanted. I always worried that he may have pulled this again to some other girl and she wasn't as lucky as me. This happened years ago and I still get panicky whenever I see a white guy in a ski mask.